Right, boys and girls, joining us tonight, we have two Paisley Grandma legends, two success stories at the school. We have current Partick Thistle player, ex United Eldred and Livingston, Ross Dockerty. And also joining us, we have DC, Mick Clark, Michael Farmer, Matthew <laughs> and Mick, better known as Scott Reid. How are we doing, lads? All right? Uh, very All good. good. All good. Hi. How's COVID? How, who's COVID? COVID think he's stuck in the house. Cabin fever, aren't you? Yeah, uh, I'm not too bad. I've been able to go in uh, into trains or train and see the physio as it is now. But aye. Uh, injured in the aye. Ross, aye. Aye, aye, aye. I've injured. I've hurt my knee against Falkirk a few weeks ago. So Nothing. as it stands, I've no missed the game. Uh, so obviously the wee lockdowns are not too bad for me in a selfish aye. way. But uh, how long are you for then? How long's it looking there? How long are you? Uh, I probably in about another five six weeks. Uh, oh, hopefully, right. we'll see. Aye. Specialist on Monday said that so. Uh, we'll see how it goes. You'll be hoping then you're not missing too much in, mate. Uh, hopefully, they'll feel well, that's that's that. If it goes back at all, right enough, but uh, hopefully, it gets back Aye. and can get back. Maybe uh, uh, yourself, Scott, mate. How you get on, mate? All right? Aye, fine. Just sticking along. Just, uh, Aye. just as what it is. You know what I mean? Nothing. Good uh, mm-hmm. Christmas and that, mate. That's it. Aye, Christmas was okay. Again, very quiet. Aye. Um, my my partner Jane, she's just uh, she's just she had COVID, so she's we were obviously like she's been oh. down at her mum and dad's, and she had that down there. So today's the uh. first day of Gina for like three weeks. So all right, uh, it's quite good, you know. Is she good? Is she all right? Aye, she's not. She's on the main. She's still barking like a dog. <laughs> all right, fuck. Not she's much changes then. Aye, well that's good then. She's. She recovered then, everything all right, but obviously apart from the cough, but that's good she's recovered then, mate. That's good, mate. Hey, boys, back where I started, Paisley Grammar. What's your memories of the grammar? Who's your favourite teachers or those battens of hated Jews? Who, who's the characters you remember for the grammar? Start with you, Ross. Uh, I think there'd be quite a few that probably hated me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> who's your guided teacher? Who's your guided teacher? Uh, Mr Hughes. Uh, who was it? What was her name? I don't even remember her name. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember. My my, my Reggie teacher was Mr. Ellis, the PE teacher. Oh, right. Uh, so I remember turning up. I'd be late quite often, uh, which is poor, but uh, I'd be late quite a lot. And he'd, <laughs> he'd, 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 first he'd be angry and then he'd be like, sit down. Sit, uh, like, should, he's chill, yeah, he's a DJ now, Mr. Ellis, isn't he? Ah, he's a DJ. I, that's what I seen now. He's like, <laughs> fucking old, maybe five years ago. <laughs> uh, I, remember, I remember him probably, probably hating me uh, as well as a couple of others obviously I never really applied myself as I, as I probably should have or could have so um, yeah, but I maybe a self Scott uh, German teacher Mrs Swanson uh, oh mate top, top, mate. Of the, top of the stairs in the third floor she said to my basically my mum and dad tell the stories they say it was the basically like a bipolar parents evening. They went from one teacher who absolutely <laughs> loved me and thought I was brilliant, and then Miss Miss Swanson said to my mum, "See if we was still open at the time there was no Morrison." She went, "Your son, <laughs> your son will be lucky to work at the pizza counter in Safeway." And you know, my dad just went, my, my dad just stood up and went, "I can see why my son doesn't like you," and just walked out. So that's, yes. like, that's that's you know that's how low it was, but she was an absolute. I mean, Aye, she was a mate, that's funny you said that. Mate, I was about to say, Mrs. Swanson, mate, she she done me for French, but she wasn't a very nice woman. But like, I was quite quiet in school. I think I was never for like if I te- I was not get involved with around teachers and all that. But if I knew they didn't like me, I didn't like them. I would kind of try and wind them up. Like funny you say, Mrs. Swanson, like I had tough like she was a cruel kind of, bitch. Aye. Aye, I know, um, but she. I felt like, I think obviously some people feel that, but I thought she was one for picking on the same ones. Like, she picked on me, I thought, but she always had the same ones. She'd want it, she would tell all ones to shut up or whatever. So, like... The injustice. That's right. <laughs> and, so, I remember... I remember... Um, so they, they had her for French. So obviously, you, you're kind of speaking tens- test in French, whatever. And I used... I, like you say in class, I, I would double sometimes. would go and start talking to my pal right behind me, whatever. And she always used to send you out, but I would have seen myself as a bad boy in school, whatever, right? But I just, well, I knew I'd get in this woman's tits and she go in mine. So she said, I was in, it was like fourth year plurums or something like that. 
And she said, Curtis, if you don't get a credit score on this, you're going to move down to Foundy. Right? I'm like, no bother. But I never used to try. No, I didn't try in French. I was never too bothered about it. Do you know what I mean? But um, for weeks and weeks and weeks, she was like, if you fail this, you're getting put down to Foundation. And that kind of way, she kind of sauntered about the class or kind of do you know what I mean? You know what? And um, I always remember it. It's the whole time I was doing actual studying until like my uh, six year exams, whatever. But I remember getting him and actually learning this kind of monologue I today, man. And um, I knew if I, I had to go to him, my mom and dad tell him I was getting put in a class in school, they'd batter fuck it, man, mate. Aye. So <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to do this. Just, just bear, no for the fact they were battered off my dad, but I wanted to wind this problem up there. So I've been him and I've but the next day, after P- I remember it was always a Thursday after PE, fifth, fifth lesson, final lesson on the Thursday, sweating, man, right? But I'm like, all right, I'll calm down. And I'm cocky as fuck, man. And then she's, she, she's like, it's like role play, so she asked you a question, you have an answer for her. And I remember nailing it, mate. And just just as every question she was asking, she was smiling to her fucking brutal face, mate. And it was that bad, she sent me out after it. She's like, pass. And that way I walked back to my seats. I'm like, fucking yeah, I suppose. She's like, cut this, out you get. <laughs> I just walked out laughing, man. Brilliant, man. So that was just kind of my memories of teachers in school. Uh, um, Ross, right, he's talking about the school team. We talk about the grammar. He's a decent school team. Right? He's got the Scottish Cup. Scottish Cup final, was it? Or was it semi finals you go to a couple of times? I, th- I think it was semi final. Aye, I think it was semi final. Semi final, aye. Scottish Cup, you were playing as well, aye? Aye, Cumnock Juniors. Aye, aye, aye. Come, uh, I don't even know the school. Who, what, would, what would the school team have been that they played? It was a school aye. they basically just they'd won the, the British before, the year before, the Scottish. Oh, right. And then we played them. And then, do you remember like, we were waiting for the bus? And the bus was an hour late. Aye. Aye, and we turned up to Cumnock Juniors like 10 minutes before the game started. Didn't get a proper warm-up. And then by the time the game st- finished, it was like n- nil-nil. After one each or nil-nil and it went to penalties. Aye. And the penalties in the dark. Aye, it was a draw. It was, it was meant to go to extra time, time, but it was dark. So we had to take penalties instead, instead of going to extra time. Aye. Uh, and then I remember it being dark, aye. I think right. it was a was it not a certain Danny Johnson that missed the penalty or something? Oh, was it Danny? <laughs> so oh. every good knows Danny, do you know what I mean? So. <laughs> I, took, I, took, I took the first pen. I took the first uh, pen. I, I, I just remember the penalty's been dark, so it was a bit of a shambles the way it turned out, but that's what it is. A just decent team, but one up. See the school teacher thing? Mr. Uh, Rankin, surely he's must have had Mr. Oh. Rankin. That guy, <laughs> that guy, I love him. That guy was nuts, wasn't he? Mate? I love him. He... he would be. I don't know what it was. I think because he knew, like, I played football and like late football, but I, I think he was a big uh, Rangers fan. And obviously, I was a Rangers uh, fan. I remember uh, going to going to uh, Milan to watch Celtic when they got to the last sixteen in the uh, Champions League, and I obviously missed like a day or maybe two days. And I came back oh. in, say it was like Tuesday, Tuesday night or Wednesday night, I came back in the Thursday and he's like, ah. he never really said much. Like, <laughs> he really never had like, a rapport with anybody. And he was just drawn and we, he's like, everybody started doing the work with He's like, ah. <laughs> and I kind of oh, looked up and no. did, you, did you enjoy the football then? Because <laughs> obviously, say, like, whatever. And I was just like, ah, I, I, he kind of had a chuckle to himself. And everybody's like, is there? What the fuck? He's a <laughs> 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 I used to think about fucking rubbles and pens that people didn't even. I've seen him flung a chair at something. He flung a chair at a lassie. No, oh. <laughs> he flung a chair at a lassie. He sent her out of the class and she walked up. As she walked around the class, she was just shut the door and she obviously she slammed the door. She was not, and he flung the chair as she was. And everybody's like, ah, like, what the fuck is going on here? Oh, he's just, mate, he was angry, he was man, just he? When he walked back down, he sat at his desk and he was like, as if nothing happened. And I was like, this guy's no right, man. Oh, mate, he was an angry, angry man. Like you say, he was like, he'd be st- he stayed quiet now and again. And then this one, we think it was pure implode, mate, wasn't he? He got pure like beaten out and all that, man. I, like, I go with him, and now again, I was quite quiet. And I just, I didn't, well, I just didn't, I didn't know why he'd be a victim of that shit. Get a fucking rub off, but he does something like that, but I. Um, again, Mr. Gallagher, he was a, I remember my school team was for our Scotties, man, to be fair, but Mr. Gallagher, I thought he was quite good to how he ran the school teams and stuff like that. The only, only thing grievance I had against him was he folded our team 
and fourth year I think it was to focus on your team because you use what items you use go to like you won the leagues and stuff like that, but whatever. But um, aye, I was great in that because we 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 didn't have a bad team, but the dev boys who were going play like pro youth of the boys who played boys club. But I always remember um, the way if all this is that day, but it was good to be your team anyway. He used, used to love you, used to love you anyway, Ross. But he thought the team in general was good. But it was good for us. Eh? Always, I've always thought his classes were good because. See, because you know how much he liked his football and how he was like these. Oh, did you ever have him as a teacher? Aye, no. aye, I had him. I had him once, aye. Aye. But it, it was, was always either top about football, pro evil in the fucking projector, wasn't it? <laughs> I think it was good, <laughs> like you say, because he knew, like, obviously there was a middle ground in the football thing, so aye. you would maybe be a bit better for him or work hard or whatever, so it was good that way. But no, he was good with the, he was good with the school team. Um aye. We had a good team right now. We had some good players, and it was uh, it was good because you you don't realise until you get older that he's giving up his time as well. Do you know what I mean? Like exactly. Every, mate. every week. So that's a, I like you saying. He was just running one team. He was running like three, four teams at a time, like you say. So yeah, that's like a fucking full time job, mate. Especially after yeah. what all days a teacher and taking abuse man. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> exactly. aye, fair play to him. Right, on to the careers, lads. So. Ross, it was Hillwood Boys Club you were at with. Was that did you you, Hillwood, you were them you were them before you went to Livering or but how did how did I, how did I, you come I, through I, before Livering? I it was is it morning until maybe fourteen or something. Oh, uh, Mon as well, mate. Aye, Mon. I, uh, I was St. Mon kind of like the whole time growing up, and then I think it was fourteen or whatever get released, uh, and then three years at Hillwood, and at Hillwood we got to the Scottish Cup final twice in the second. The, th- the second time, which was the third year, uh, we got to the Scottish Cup final. There was obviously a load of scouts that they go to these games or whatever. Um, and I think it was Livingston. I think there was another, maybe Alloa in Queen's Park or something like that. It phoned me after the game. Um, and the guy, obviously, at Livy, I went through and spoke to him. Uh, and he basically said that they were there watching somebody else. I think there was a couple of other players. We had a good team right enough, but there was a couple of mm-hmm. other players. Uh, and he liked what he's seen in me, so I wanted him to sign. And I, I knew that they were full time. There was air. I'd, I'd been training with air kind of all, all that season. We playing with Hillwood mm-hmm. as well and playing games with air. So the kind of agreement with to sign with United. Um, okay. And I seen the full time offer uh, from Livingston. So the guys there weren't very happy. To, to say the least. But <laughs> I just seen the full time thing and thought I fancy that. Um, it's kind of everybody's dream as as they grow up. They play. He played football. Aye, right. um, so that's that's kind of how that came about, right? Aye. Right. Who was it? Who was the coach in it? You love it then. Your first coach. Uh, it was. There was a wee guy, a wee scout, uh, wee scout, and then it was the coach was uh, Brian Brian Welsh. Uh, right. He's now over. In, I think played Dundee United, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, he's now over in America. He's got his own kind of football school I think over there um, but he was uh, he was the coach who got us in he was like the head of youth or the kind of 19s coach at the time um, mm-hmm. and he was brilliant great coach uh, played wanted to play football properly kind of 4-3-3 um, but the, the good thing about him was was like we ha- we were in a team where we were in the, like, the leagues below so nice. it was like Celtic and Rangers and the other Premier League teams and mm-hmm. we were in like a league below, so we were like always the best in that league. But ah, I love it always good. He he would coach us properly. Do you know what I mean? We could easily win out and, and beat a lot of the teams which we were. But mm-hmm. we had we always had good players coming through and players that were going to go and get a chance as well, which which was brilliant. Mm-hmm. Any players in that team that made it? Well, no, made it, but end up playing regular first team football. Aye, aye, there was a there was a few. Um, we had boy Mark McNulty, who's also been captain with Scotland. Uh, mm-hmm. Stephen Scrugo, he went down to play with Hull, Sheffield, eh, no Hull, Sheffield United, um, and a few clubs in South St. Johnson, I think he was at. Um, Good team, man. Big Cole Donaldson. There was a few, aye, there was there was a mm-hmm. fair few boys. So it was, aye. and I think like this, you know, the, the easy decision for me going there was you've seen mm-hmm. boys previously, um, like say, say Murray Davidson, there's even, some, even the boys, the Jacobs brothers and stuff like that, aye. Lee Griffith. Snodgrass, whatever they dock in through mm. Livingston. So when I, I was uh, when they came calling, I was like, brilliant, I want to go there. It's funny that you say that, mate. Like his love have always, like you say, they've had that kind of 
always broke through some good youth players. Is there something they doing something different for your teams? Do you think, or is it just basic? I, I don't know. I, th- I think no. I can't can be luck. I, I think it's changed a wee bit now that they're mm-hmm. in the Premier League and maybe you're less. Well, they always full time. Aye, aye, aye. They were always full time. Maybe, maybe that. Maybe that could be it because obviously they went doing the leagues and stuff like that. But also the kind of Italian owners and stuff. I think they've always tried to keep it. Maybe non professional, but I've always, for what I remember, but just the way we were talking about that, I, I can't remember really remember them being part time. So maybe that's maybe why they've got their kind of better players that have came through or produced the players that end up going on to have decent careers. Do you know what I mean? Guys I like Andy Hardy. When I played against Livy, they had guys like you say, Andy Hardy, they had, they had Griffiths as well. Do you know what I mean? Like like you say, the boys, they've, they've always produced well known kind of players, mate. Do you know what I mean? I think, so, I think that, like, They've all, they, they had good youth coaches. They had, that, they had good youth coach before I went, and obviously the guy well she was 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 there when I was there, and it was it was brilliant as well. But you had good players who were always challenging each other and training and stuff like that. So even although oh my. as I said, touched on before, the league that we were in wasn't the best standard or whatever. But mm-hmm. when you, we, we came up against like your Celtics and Rangers and the youth cups, like there wasn't a big golf in class. Do you know what I mean? Aye. So Aye. I think. Livy could pull players in and, and on their kind of reputation of having produced players. Uh, and obviously, mm-hmm. the players that they produced, as you said, they're Hardy, your Snodgrass, Dorans, mm-hmm. Griffiths as well. Um, and even kind of later, when it was your kind of team, you've got, you've got obviously, a, a Scotland international there as well. Um, uh, Scoogle, who's went down south and done well, big call as well. So, I think uh, you're probably right in terms of the full time, but I think they've got that reputation and boys kind of wanted to go mm-hmm. there and, and, and ch- we all challenged each other because training at times it was like there'd be scraps in training. Like, we already, like we'd like we be training obviously small sided games and it'd be like that competitive. Where oh, really? I, maybe I see you are, but I, don't, I see you are. And it's, it's mental, but that, I think that's what kind of pushed you on because you, uh, you always want to do well. Do you know what I mean? I uh, definitely, mate. So I know Levy had the book. Was it five different managers in five years at that kind of stage? I think when you were there, it was like four different managers. You probably had the well, time, I, but I, I, we had when I first signed it was Gary. Bowen. Was Gary Bowen, aye, Gary, Gary Bowen, Bowen, aye. So he actually what gave was me he my like, debut. He's he good. Good. people say, I, I, a wee bit. He's it was good because it was like him and the and the assistant Scotty Patterson. Scotty was so chilled, and and Gary Bowen was like just. It could go off the rails, you know what I mean? Uh, which was like a kind of good balance. Um, but the team that they had, they were coming up. They surely get they get put down to the bottom league, and they were coming back up. So they had a kind of Aye. basis of full time players, and then they were playing in a part time league, and then obviously they just came up with that team. Um, so there was a winning team. So it was like mm-hmm. always enjoyable seeing there. And then obviously when you start to go up and train Aye. with the first team. It was enjoyable doing that. Um, but uh, no, he was, he was good, Gary Bowen. Uh, uh, he gave you a debut then, aye? He gave my debut away to, uh, away to Aloha. I think it was a lot. Do you remember it, right, aye? Aye, aye, I remember it. They, they'd already won the league. Um, so there was a kind of chance. And I'd trained with the first team kind of quite a lot. Meaning like one or two other young boys. Um, so uh. there was a chance that, that was always going to happen. And he, he kind of put me on the Friday and says, you're going to be playing... Uh, Going to be playing tomorrow, whatever, and played right uh, back. Um, but I remember nervous. up. But I, no, see, to be honest, I wasn't. I was slightly, but it wasn't that I was no. really nervous. I don't know. I think maybe because you feel ready for it. I a wee bit. I, I think because they'd won uh, the league. Like there's a wee bit less pressure uh, and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? And it was uh, it was the uh, last game of the season, so everybody was relaxed. Whereas I think if. It maybe been in a game where it was a, a kind of meaningful uh, game, and everybody was uh, up for it, or whatever. Then be different. But no, I, I remember. I don't remember being too nervous. Uh, uh, good timing for you, mate. Might, might, might have looked flat, like, but no, it was. Uh, it was actually- <laughs> Fair enough, mate. So, like I say, is then before they cut the years before you get the least. What was it like? Because how are you going to make kind of managers? Because you had like few managers in between then. So you had like was it Gareth? Was it Gareth Evans? Richie Buck and John McGlynn. John McGlynn uh, ended up before, finishing me, but... Before any of them, we had uh, John Hughes. John Hughes and John Collins. John Hughes, oh, fuck yeah. Jeez, uh, I so they, they oh, took him that? in. That was brilliant, to be honest. Like, uh, Gary Bone Gary Bone got sacked in, I think it was in February or something, March, and then Yogi came in next. But it was Yogi's manager, John Collins, as director of football. 
and Gareth Evans, who was the next manager, he was the assistant. Um, oh, but right, it was brilliant, like in terms of uh, see the coaching that they had, uh, the uh, philosophy of football and stuff like that. Like, I speak uh, to guys now who I played with, and obviously I was young, so I was just learning whatever. I was only maybe, I don't know, 19 or whatever. Um, uh, but there's guys who I speak to now, and they're, they're like 30 when, he, when they came in, and they were like, I was, it was an education for us. Do you know what I mean? And uh, their, their experience pros. So they were mm. they were they two were brilliant. And Gareth Evans, obviously assistant as well. Um they mm. were excellent. And obviously I started kind of playing as as Gary Bowling left. So it was good in that sense. I'm starting to play in a team where Aye. you're getting educated on the game properly, do you know what I mean? Aye. Uh, How was Yogi with you then? Is he bubbly as he as he seems? Oh he's, he's brilliant. Aye. I love him. Aye. Aye. He's, he was good to me, I think, because I came in and obviously I was a young player and the way I play, it's like, I'm no like, fancy whatever you've probably seen me play about it. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, I just get stuck in, try and pass the ball and keep the ball moving, pass it, mm-hmm. whatever. So I think he liked that, see that, having uh, that determination and that dig, uh, whereas like he'd say stuff and whatever and he'd be like, like what about this about Doc? And you're like... Off, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, he's just, you know, but he's like, that's he's good, for me because I was, um, as I say, I was only 19 and he's coming in. Him and obviously John Collins, who's had what 50 caps for Scotland, uh, legend, he? Uh, so it was brilliant. Uh, and obviously, they uh, were they were trying to do everything right and kind of raise the club as they did. Um, uh, that was good. Uh, so, will you get that good on the team then through the kind of years? Then, obviously, John Hughes leaves, stuff like that, and all different managers, but you always kind of. Uh, consistent in the team or was it I, well, a period I, you were in out of the team? When they came in I was playing right back at first um, and obviously when they came in the season kind of finished and I played certain mid the last game obviously that was my position uh, always kind of was but I was playing right back a lot of the time um, and then the start of the next season we had a lot of injuries um, and I ended up playing centre mid starting centre mid kind of every week um, mm. and then obviously I I, get, I think that was maybe till the October, whatever, and I get injured. Um, and since I get injured, we got a lot of boys back, and my injury kind of came and went for the like for the next kind of year and a half. So that was a frustrating thing. Um, when I'm playing, Aye. I was coming back rehabbing, and it was just breaking down again. But I wouldn't say Aye. after that I was I'd be I'd be playing kind of now and then when I was available, but it was just the fact that I couldn't get up to a certain level of fitness without breaking down. Uh, it's probably killed me at Libby. Murdered me. So come back to yourself in a minute, go to Scott. So Scott, obviously we're you're, you're basically heavily based in football, but how does a boy for Paisley end up be getting roles that he's had yourself? How did you end up getting into acting, first and foremost? Was it did you end up in pace? Was it because I know that's the only thing that's the only thing I can think of, but how it was yeah. your how was your path to get the acting, mate? Um yes, so pace was um yeah, started that when I was young, you know, my mum and dad when we moved to Paisley, uh, my mum and dad's uh, the neighbours a few doors down from them were saying that uh, that their daughter went to pace and I was something like six or seven at the time. So basically got um they took me along to that and between football on a Saturday morning and then pace in the afternoon, that was kind of them, you know, getting I was getting looked after type thing. Um mm-hmm. and then just started really getting into it, enjoying it. And then when I was about 13, 14, I had a uh, had a tra- had trial with St. Mum and then I was at Queen's Park for a for a pre season. And at the end All of right. the season they'd said to me, uh, you know, you're you're as good as what we've got. Um and I always remember that day going home and sitting in the drive with my dad and he was like, right, you're, you're trying to do both here. You're trying to do acting and you try to play football. And he says, right. if you want to play football, then you need to, you should focus on do, doing that all the time. Or if you want to do acting, then you should kind of, you know, do that. And it was a kind of big decision to make at that age, I suppose. But I, I kind of knew then I thought I had more chance of succeeding. Uh, going down the acting acting path and uh, the football. Steve had the choice in terms of there was a, a career base at both ahead of you at that time. What would you have picked? Uh, if I was, you knew you could have went and played first team football. I um, it's a hard one. Obviously, I mean, there's uh, obviously no guarantees. I mean, you look, you know, because obviously me and Ross we played centre mid together at school. 
and you know I you know look up to Ross a lot in our football in terms of like playing yeah. with him as a player learns a lot but also like watching how, how challenging it's been for Ross at times and I'm you know I like to think I'm just quite supportive of Ross you know when he's got takes yeah. him, watching his games just to go you know I've been to the air to see him a few times and it's a really I think that life's it's it's it can be hard and you know Ross is one injury away at his age, you know, potentially not being able yeah, to, you know what I mean? Get an, it, yeah, so good I, point, mate. Aye, very good point. I, I think it, it, it's, a, it, and it's the same as acting though, you know, it's like you're you're only as good as your last gig and, and the, there's a lot of similarities between being an actor and being a footballer because we're, mm-hmm. self, we're almost like self-employed people trying to prove ourselves to be good enough to get the next game or to get the next role and anything can happen, you know. You, you break your leg or, or you, you have a really shocking performance, your career could be over like, like that. Yeah. I, think, I think both of them are obviously, there's there's massive risks in both. But, you know, if you ask me if I could play for Celtic in the first team, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd drop everything else and, and, do, and do that in a heartbeat. I, I think that kind of, I think you've got to weigh up what level you're going to be at. Do you know what I mean? If you're going to go uh, and play with Celtic or play with Man United or whatever, then, Obviously, sorry, but in there, but I'm thinking, I know it's got what he's saying here. He wants to, you've got to wait up in terms of, but also, like, you know, I was, I think I was realistic enough at, at, you know, a young age to go, right, if I'm going, say, and spending two months at Queen's Park during the summer and I'm not breaking through at that level or even making an impact there, I think it was like, you know, this is going to be difficult. I wouldn't want a you know, if, if I didn't have anything else that I, that I loved, the acting is obviously like a huge passion and it's something that I massively enjoy. If I didn't have that, then I think I would have just went full guns blazing into football. And I think I'm very fortunate to have like, you know, some people don't have things, uh, no more than one thing that they, that they love. And I was very, very lucky about to have that, I suppose. Hey, do you have any influences that made, uh, can, uh, made you fancy acting, Scott? Was there anyone in your life that maybe push you towards acting or just basically something you had inside you that you wanted to do? No, I think it was, uh, obviously, like, your, your parents are a big influence and my dad, you know, obviously, like, movies and, like, programmes and got me into kind of films and music very early on and I think once you've got a, a, a you know, once you're getting a lot of things coming through that are different from what, like, you normally, like, you would see, talk about with your pals at school or, you know, you're just seeing, like, a different genre of things coming through and Pace was a massive influence in terms of opening, like, taking me to the theatre experiencing that at a young age, you know, uh, getting to see people on stage, either making people laugh or holding an audience, that type of thing. It was always something that I thought was quite a powerful thing to be able to do. And I think great footballers do the same thing. You know, when you watch a great footballer in the middle of the park, you know, they can have a, they can have a stadium on on the, you know, the edge of their seat. And I think Mm -hmm. there was something about being in a in a theatre that gave that gave me that same adrenaline and feeling that like watching a footballer and also being on stage, it's like being on a football pitch. So you've got hundreds of adrenaline, you've got hundreds, you know, there's nerves, you know, there's um, I mean, it's a bit more rigorous in terms of like you've got a linear line you need to follow in terms mm-hmm. of like, and stuff like that. But there is something about that that um that rush that I can experience at an early age that, that kind of made me want to do that again and again. It's kind of like, a, I'm, I'm definitely addicted to the perfor- the drug that is performance adrenaline. Like, you know, it's it's a great, yeah. it, it, it's, you know, and that can be anything. I get as nervous as going on stage or I'm nervous and excited as going on stage with 50 people as I do when I was going on at the Hydro for still game with 12,000 people, mm-hmm. you know. Aye. It's, Scott Scott to Aye. Aye. What a night that was. Aye. Do, you have, do you have any kind of heroes or kind of role models that you maybe look up to in terms of in the acting world? Any uh, your young young boy, who would you was there any kind of actors that you thought or oh, he's kind of maybe yeah. a reason why you didn't do you know what I mean? Because mine is always kind of your, your Paul Gascoigne's or Zinedine Zidane's that sort of kind of ones but you get watching watch football. Obviously, the day you get your kind of messages when older and stuff like that, but was there any actors you kind of seen that kind of like? Do you know what it, it was? It's weird because I've never really been like obsessed with one, one or two actors. Really, I've never really had that. I mean, there was guys I thought like um, Paul, Paul Giamatti was always a good one. He always used to like stand oh. out, and make me think, oh well, like he's doing something. Um, he's doing something that you know I haven't seen before. But then it was always more characters in in movies. It was always more like the way it's it's, it's hard to explain. It's like 
they again it's like the the rush of emotion how that actually grabs you you know like little moments like obviously things like i, I love uh, monsters inc i think it describes humanity in every shape or form in, in, in a perfect <laughs> in a perfect hour and a half you know it makes you laugh it makes you cry it makes you sad it makes you happy it's got everything in form but then things like you know Shawshank Redemption films like that it's that essence of like the old uh-huh. man getting out, of, getting out of the jail and not being able to survive that way that that makes you feel that was the inspiration to go like I would love to be able to like yeah, yeah I get you I get you play a character that can have that effect on a person if that, if that makes sense aye brilliant mate so touch on this kind of Looking for this breakthrough, how 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 does an actor go through kind of making their kind of marks? So obviously, you got into getting good roles and line of duty and still game stuff like that and fight the people you've worked with. But how is that kind of process of like making your kind of short films and stuff like that? How how stressful is that for you? How long did it take you basically to go from that kind of start out period to the period where you're making that kind of breakthrough? If you get what I mean? Well, for me, it was. I mean, I obviously left school at the end of fifth year, so I was still 16 and went to drama school, started at 17, so did three years there. And by the time I was graduated, I was 19. So, you know, the, the oldest guy in my year was double my double my age at the time I was starting, so he was like 34. Oh, so, you know what I mean? It's oh, a parallel. It's like a whole life. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't believe going into drama school now and starting with a 17 year old who was a cocky, arrogant little prick who thought he knew mm-hmm. about acting that you know that you could. Um, I remember that guy. A <laughs> 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 uh, night, uh, nightmare in a night out. Um, <laughs> um, I so basically it's it's really hard uh, being an actor. Is, it's really tough, especially being, you know, from a working class background, uh, very limited opportunities. Um, and basically you've got to, it's basically you're selling a product, which, you know, I, I kind of got that business model idea quite early on at drama school. Although it can be arty farty and lovey dovey and actors do this and actors do that type thing. It's actually, the flip side of that is actually you've got to network, you've got to, You've got to be brave, you've got to be bold, you've got to go and talk to people, you've got to put yourself in difficult situations. You've also, like being an actor is very much, you know, it's, it's a, you know, you are the product and you've got to find a way to market yourself. And I think as from a business perspective, I got that quite early on at drama school and tried to kind of put myself and make co- as many contacts as possible. I was also like, I managed to have a couple of opportunities quite young to go down to uh, London and do, and do some stuff there, shows for like a wee couple of nights, really small, uh, you know, the fringe stuff in London. And actually, oh, I was quite cheeky. My A boy in the year above me, uh, a Scottish guy, he was like coming and hawing about what agent to kind of go with. And he ended up choosing whatever one of the two agents that he didn't choose. I knew straight away that I was going to send her an email because I knew that she was looking for a Scottish, a young Scottish actor, young male. Oh, so right. I just chanced my arm, uh, sent her a message, was doing a kind of show thing in London. She was, she, I, she, I went to the meeting, um, you know, with her, with Jeanette. Uh, I was like 45 minutes late, got lost, had a Blackberry, looking at Blackberry maps. I remember running about Regent Street, freaking out. Got in there, it went really well, and then she phoned me half an hour before the show started saying, oh, I'm really sorry, I'm not going to make the show. And I was like, all right, well, I'll get in contact when I'm in my third year at drama school, when we do a showcase thing, and she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? She's like, I'm going to sign you. And that's like, a, you know, I was 18 at the time, and that was a really big deal. Oft. Brilliant. You know, uh, and I've been with her, and it's coming on 10 years in April. So, nice one, mate. Still hard. So, from that, I mean, I make, made so many mistakes. I had so many additions for some really big stuff and some, like, small parts. And when you first start out, you just, you think everybody's going to give you loads of time and respect and, you know, if, if you think every your addition is as important to them as it is to you and it's really, Aye. it's basically like you have to learn quick that come in, do your job, be fantastic and then fuck off. Um, Aye. Aye. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like, a, you know, you're trying to go in and play a 90 minute game of football in a trial match, but you've got to be able to show your highlight reel in five minutes. So you've got to score that wonder goal, you've got to make a goal line clearance and then assist at a free kick or something like that. And 
Uh, if you don't do that, then you know it's not that you've only got yourself to blame, but sometimes uh, it just doesn't happen for uh, you. Do um, you get nervous, Scott, by before all this kind of stuff? Do you get nervous? Oh, yeah. You're a nervous boy. Yeah, uh, well, I. It's, I, w- I wouldn't say it's necessarily nerves, I'd say it's more like anticipation. Um, right, okay. It's also performance nerves, which is good. Sometimes, yeah. uh, you know, if you don't get nervous, then, you know, you're a bit, it, it comes, it, it comes Aye. up. You don't have that spark. Aye. Aye, I can't even Honestly, know. there's Aye. nothing more terrifying going into a room with four or five people. Just looking at you. It's a camera on your face and, and, and doing, a, doing a scene, whereas if you're in Aye. a on set and there's 50, 60 people there, you know you've got the job, so you feel a lot more relaxed. Addition in Toronto. Uh, uh, you, may, you mentioned London there, mate. Was that like for a night out? Any yeah, stories? Uh, I, well, my, one of my <laughs> best friends owned a, owned a pub in Piccadilly Circus, so right. uh, that, that, that used to be quite good. Um, and I, <laughs> I lived in there for five years, so I, I know. All oh, right, aye. When I worked in the restaurants, when I first moved down, I mean, that was just, it was carnage. Uh, I'd, <laughs> maybe, I'd, maybe, I'd maybe delve into that more if I wouldn't get my head kicked in. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, mate. Don't worry, mate. No worries, mate. Ross, mate, so go back to yourself, mate. So, can I find out your love? How did that finish up for you, mate, before you, we fall out of favour of it? Are we just the way things work? Uh, yeah. Come in your contract or how they work out? Well, as a lot of it is in Scotland, uh, it's in the lower leagues in Scotland, it's kind of one year deals a lot of the time. I think it's Aye. maybe changed a wee bit now, but mm-hmm. uh, as I touched on before, I was I was injured quite a lot. So I was only really getting a one year deal because it was like get injured for one or whatever. Um, fucking injured now. But it was like. <laughs> You were only getting one year deal, so obviously there was like a year on a year left on it. But there was this kind of problem, this same problem that I kept having, like with my groins and whatever, and hip. So John McGlynn had come in, um, <clears throat> and he came in and he kind of changed the style of football and went a wee bit more direct, uh, which wasn't necessarily meaning that I wasn't going to play, but it was just like that coupled with the injury mm-hmm. thing, where I would get, I said, as I said before, I'd get so far in terms of fitness. I'd be up playing, maybe getting on the pitch for the first team. I'd, I'd play reserve games and then I'd break down again. So I think obviously that didn't really help my cause. And kind of the whole season, mm. it was pretty much written off. Uh, ended up mm. getting an operation in like, I think it was the April or something. And obviously my mm. contract was up in the May. So after that, I'd kind of, kind of rehab myself um, after I'd left. Like, it wasn't in bad terms or whatever. It was just, mm. you can understand from their point of view. Wait, you got to be the left of it. Oh, I was gutted, aye, because it was all I'd known in terms of that aye. that that environment. Do you know what I mean? I'd signed there when I was, mm-hmm. I think, sixteen or seventeen, and it was four four seasons pretty much. Um, mm-hmm. But as I say, like you can, I could understand looking back for for their point of view that you, they can't, they they couldn't have kept somebody on um, who was always going to get injured. Um, but obviously, since that problem has been fixed, it's not been as bad. Um, but I was gutted, of course I was, but I think it kind of, I don't know, made you more determined because you, I mm-hmm. probably never realised what I was in and, and the, the opportunity I had at that point um, until I'd left, obviously, and I was without a club till I think it was maybe this September or something like that. I'd rehabbed oh, myself right. and then I didn't train to get fit uh, and then ended up signing with Airdrie. So I was uh, gutted, but as I say, it, you, it, it taught me a lesson in terms of Need to look after yourself. Need to look after your body. Don't be going in night suit every five minutes as well. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's hard that last one, isn't it, mate? Um, like, you, <laughs> like you say, mate, you go to, you go to Airdrie, mate. So you went as a trialist, as you said. So how long? How was that like? Be, be, like, like you say, mate, as a trialist, I feel I don't know about you, but you're, you feel horrible, mate. Most of the time, you're fucking. You're, I feel like every time you try to do something, you're trying to do a bit extra. You're trying to impress as much. It's all right. It's different when you're playing a game of football you, and you know somebody's watching you as you're ready there. But if you're going and you're trying as a trialist, mate, I just I just hated it, mate. Throw it at you. I, I, that, that was my kind of, I think that was my kind of first time in that. Obviously, since I was younger and get, get in trial at Boys Club, but they kind of wanted to sign you, whatever. But uh, at Livingston, I'd already signed. And then, like, I'd, I'd been in there. Um, and obviously, I'd been, 
unfit or I'd been rehabbing myself um, mm-hmm. and then I went into St Monty train so I was at a level of fitness that was alright so I was thankful mm-hmm. for that do you know what I mean? Were you worried um, Ross at that stage? Were you worried that you'd maybe because you were because you came out for an injury you're without a club did you think there was maybe a kind of decision you had to make or you just did you be confident I, I, and get something sorted? I'll be honest I was I was because as I touched on there I was in I was only I think I've maybe been 21 um, and I was in training with St Martin's kind of youth team so they'd have been like boys are 19 18, 19 20 year old um, and I'd been there training just to get fit really um, and it was mm. kind of the question was asked oh will I be able to get a deal here they were in the Premier League at that point um, and it was a it was a no fair manager which was I wasn't expecting to get a deal there but I thought I'd ask mm. anyway um, and mm. then I was in training there, but I was hoping to try and get in somewhere else, but nothing was coming up really, because like yeah. once teams have had their budget and, and whatever, mm-hmm. the transfer window as, as such was was finished. Um but I was starting to kinda starting to worry a wee bit, but when my mate phoned me uh, and said about Gary Bowling, obviously it was Airdrie at the point. Uh, so yeah. he'd known me from Livingston. So he basically said to me, come into train and whatever. So I went into train and I, and I, I, I don't know if it, I was confident enough. Like I was obviously worried about if I don't get a deal out somewhere, but I was just mm-hmm. hoping to get in somewhere. So see when I got in Aye. Airdrie, I was confident Aye. enough that I was going to be able to all right to 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 get a deal. Um, and obviously it worked out that way. It was sort of gaffer busy, mate. For, you can trust you, mate. Do you know what I mean? Because always gave you a debut, mate. He's got that affinity towards you, mate. So that was always a big deal. Eh? Yeah, I think I think I was going to say that. I, I think obviously him being manager uh, would have helped as well, but. Obviously, mm. he he knows you as a as a person and uh, obviously as a uh, player, and he could probably see that I was I was fit enough. Um, mm-hmm. In Airdrie at that point, they were struggling in the league, so uh, I think he was, he was desperate to try and get a, a couple of bodies in. So how did you go in that season, mate? We I think when I joined, uh, when I joined, we were I think bottom of the league, and then we just missed. That was in maybe in September or October. I can't remember mm-hmm. exactly, but. We just missed out in playoffs. I think we finished fifth, uh, and we were maybe a point or two off of playoffs. Uh, but we had some good players. When I like, obviously, I, I came in myself, and we had uh, the big boy Liam Lindsay ended up coming in and loan for Thistle, who now Aye. is doing south at Stoke or whatever it is. Uh, the boy Scotty Fraser was in loan from Dundee United. He's now at MK Dons flying. So we had Aye. good young players as well. I think they just needed kind of add. They had a poor start of the season, but. We done really well, finished well in the league, um, and obviously, as I say, just missed it in playoffs, which was which was disappointing. But it was uh, for, for where I went in, and me playing, I don't know how many games it was, twenty odd games in a row uh, after my injury. It was good for me in that respect. Uh, how are you feeling after that? Are you feeling a little better? Are you a bit better established at this point, maybe as a player then. I I, 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 I felt it was good just to play. Obviously, uh, I'd, I'd played. A number of games in the championship before we living some whatever, but it was good for me in my head that I'd had this injury that had bugged me for like two or two years, maybe on and off. Knew that I'd just played six months pretty much without any any problems Aye. at all. There was no niggles or anything like that. So it was Aye. brilliant for me in, in that sense. And obviously, as I say, it's, it's good to it's good to get playing again. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you get the move to earn, mate. How'd that come about? I basically the one of the boys for for Airdrie, Paddy Boyle was going here. Um, he'd already signed there. I think obviously Airdrie were wanting to want to keep me as well. Um, mm-hmm. But Paddy was going here, and he'd I think he basically said to the manager at air, uh, "You should sign this boy, whatever." He was good for us last season. Mm-hmm. Paddy still jokes about it now. To be fair, about Al Makiri. <laughs> 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 but no, he. Uh, he, he basically said to the manager, you should have a look at him or whatever if you're needing a midfielder. Um, and basically that's how it came about. I uh, met Ian McCall, who was obviously wanting to sign. I'm not being funny, but there was a, the money was a lot better here and the fact that they were in the same league, but Aye. they were signing players who were very good players. Paddy was a really good player. Plus, he was leaving mm-hmm. the injury as well. I did, Alan Trouton, they were signing. Uh, so it was looking promising in terms of the players they were signing. So, it was mm-hmm. it, it was obviously kind of no brainer for me in terms of that. I it, I think the same time Alwa uh, were in the league above, and it was at Danny Lennon who was there, and I think he'd kind of shown a bit of interest. But I'd already kind of agreed mm-hmm. to go to A, and I was like looking forward to playing at the top 
playing their league and, and going and winning games and challenging to eh, go and we'll go and get promoted. Like you say, mate, he's he's up and doing it. He's been up the first year and he's back down and he's back, back up again. How do you kind of summarise how that went for you? He's a he's a good team. Guys like Nicky Devlin end up getting moved into about Walsh all with it and stuff like that as well. And the relationship with Ian McCall, obviously still you're back playing on the day. But do you think that was you actually getting to that stage where right, I'm not a play, not a player as such, but establishing yourself again and then you're playing regular football and you're achieving things, getting promotion. Was that maybe kind of you feeling like this is me kicking on you? I know I, I think it was just a matter of for me, and I don't mean to sound arrogant or whatever, but I always knew that I'd be good if I could no have any injuries. I always knew I'd be able to, I'd be good enough to play and at some sort of level. And obviously, that mm. came about here, um, where I played, we won promotion, as you say, uh, the first year, um, and then the championship. We obviously, went back down, but kind of we were only part one of two part time teams in the league came, um, but. It was mm-hmm. good because I played kind of every game pretty much in that championship season. So that was me again realizing this is all right. This these injuries are fine. Do you know what I mean? So it was good mm-hmm. in that sense. Um, obviously disappointing that we get rele- relegated, but uh, mm-hmm. obviously come back up the next year, going full time at Air. We 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 can we can back up um, having won the league as well. Um, but I say it was brilliant. We had by the end of the time we had it Air, even when we first joined, but. The players that we had at air in the championship, when before the kind of team get broken up, you've got you had like Lauren Shankland, you had Aye. Alan Forrest who's moved on, Nicky Devlin at a point, you had mm-hmm. Mark Kerr who'd played probably five hundred games. Aye. Um, Donated you, in that good you, player, I. The, the, you had so many good players, and obviously I think it's going to be split up now. But you realise that. These players, as I said before about the Livingston thing, see when you're playing with each other and training with each other, you're driving each other on all the time. And Aye. I'm learning. I'm looking at a guy like Mark Kerr and learning from mm-hmm. him. Do you know what I mean? Even though I was capable of playing and, and playing at times, like I'm still no, I'm no always learning it. To well, I, well, he's played how many games and he's over I don't know ten year older than me or whatever. So it's mm-hmm. you, it was good. It's good in that respect that. The manager had brought all these good players in, and, and you're you're able to challenge yourself yeah. and learn from them. You touched a couple of players there, mate. Nick Devlin and Lawrence Shanklin, mate. First on Nick Devlin, mate. Like I, I knew him come up through Dumbarton. He always had a good attitude, and he just took off, mate. I was talking to Tony Walsh and by Mark Maniff last night about that. He came came out in Dumbarton, and um, he always had a good attitude. And uh, he was a captain. You he left. He was a captain before he left, wasn't he? And aye, you, aye. you took over him, didn't you? But how do you think he was? Aye, aye. Good, good leader. Nicky was, Nicky was brilliant. I, I good. He was obviously Nicky was the same age as me, so mm-hmm. he, I think it was that was that was a big thing at air at that point. He was like air's youngest captain, whatever, and he was loved by everybody aye. at the club. And quite rightly mm-hmm. so. To be fair, he was, he was brilliant for air, so aye. it was good to see that you could put your faith in it. Didn't you have to be this old? old guy I'm not saying it, 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 it shouldn't be but it was good to see that mm. well a captain can be somebody who's young and inspires people with the way they play as well do you know what I mean uh, um, exactly Nicky yeah. was you've probably seen him play he's um, Nicky will be one that can run the longest run the fastest Aye. it's ridiculous the guy's a machine um, and obviously he's went on and done well he's now played at Livingston every week as well so do you think maybe make a step, to step up to Scotland uh, I don't see why not in terms of uh, obviously I'm not it's, a, it's, a, it's a position we're kind of struggling at mate I think I don't know about you but I feel, I feel like you get Steve McDonald's played last few games and stuff like that but I feel like Nicky's I mean, suited to that role do you know what I mean I don't know about yourself mate but I, I like like you're saying there I'd probably agree with that in terms of there's <laughs> a lot of the other positions are somebody that's, that's nailed on to play in that position or there's one or two whereas the right back that <laughs> O'Donnell's done well recently when he's played, but he, mm-hmm. you don't you get you don't get the feeling that he's he's nailed on for that position. So mm-hmm. I, I think Nicky will probably be looking at it and going. By the way, I think definitely, it, I think definitely. It it. And as you say, like and as I touched on there, to play wing back, you've got to be rapid and you've got to be able to run all day, and that's the two things that mm-hmm. Nicky's got. Aye. over and above a lot Aye. of people. Hopefully kicks on and gets it, makes all I think he deserves it, man. Personally, just for, I know obviously the game for you know as well, man. So but now boy who hope looking for trying that Euro squad long shank, mate. How is he like? What was he like in training? Must have been a joke or something finishing, mate. 
some of the things you'd, we, I was speaking about this a few weeks ago. We, you'd obviously train with these guys, whatever. Shanks was, mm-hmm. you, you wouldn't do a lot in the games, but see if you see if you put balls in the box or you, you get them a chance Aye. as a goal, like you just knew it. Like, whereas, I've uh, seen it in training, like see, the, you do small sided games. We had, uh, mm-hmm. you've got obviously get your, your main goalie, and we've, we had a young goalie who was a sub goalie, and he, uh, <laughs> There was a training session and it was like small series games and he dinked the, <laughs> the the younger goalie three times in about ten minutes and I'm no exaggerating. Man. Like, Absolute liberty, man. It was like the one where he opened up and he dinked it like in the top corner, like and it was just he boys are like, I, I'm doing that, like looking away and <laughs> like, running about picking himself laughing and I just felt for the goalie. <laughs> <laughs> but that was like, as I say, you could tell he was gonna go higher and higher and I'm hoping that you see his goal the other night. You know, he scores from the halfway line. The goalie's no even. I meant to be asked, mate. It's just instinct, mate. Um, just instinct, mate. No, I mean, mate. It's fucking that's great, it. mate. You see it. You see the goalie has a wee quick look, and then it's just. But it's the fact that it's Aye. inch perfect. Do you know what I mean? The goalie. If it's Aye. anywhere else, the goalie's going to stay, or it's going over. But that's... no, you could tell. Yeah, I'm just kind of hoping that you know, obviously he'll put, he'll be open as well that he can kind of kick on and get maybe another move as well. Aye, hopefully, mate. Hopefully. So, like we says, mate, Nicky Devlin leaves and we call make sure the captain now. How was that like? Must be a bit of proud. I know it was, for you, mate. It was good. Aye, uh, I remember there was kind of interest for elsewhere. Um, obviously, we'd we'd get that was the season we get relegated, or the after mm-hmm. the season we get relegated. Aye. That, uh, Nicky was leaving, whatever. So there was interest for elsewhere, and he was basically. I think obviously one week he could stay. The, the club were going full time. We were going to be in a, a league where it was all part time boys. You were what to go and win the league. And I was like, well, do you know what? I kind of fancy going there. There was a chance, a wee chance to maybe go to Livingston, who were just going up, uh, just going up the league. And I mm-hmm. thought at the time, you know, bit me in the arse a wee bit, but I thought Livingston would struggle in the championship. They ended up getting promoted uh, to the Premier League that season. You know what I mean? Uh, um, but I can't believe that. You can't, you can't really you know, dwell on that. But no, it was good. It was a proud moment, uh, as you say. Uh, like, yeah. I was, I don't know, maybe 24. Are you loud in the change room, Ross? Are you a speaker? Are you loud? Uh, a wee, a wee, but I wouldn't say loud. I would say, um, I wouldn't say quiet either, but more kind of on the park. An organizer the example the park, probably. I like. I, I'd say if there's stuff happening in the park, I'm able to see it and organize it rather than speaking mm. a lot in the change room. Whatever, I'd still obviously do, um, but Aye. it's more kind of organizing and, and, and oh. things like that. Um, but mm-hmm. no, it was. I, I I I wouldn't say I wouldn't say loud, um, but other folk might other folk might disagree with that. Are <laughs> you hey, back with yourself, Scott, mate? So, like we say, you're. I can kind of say you're ready to break through now. So then about 2016, your career probably takes a, a turn for the better, mate, and you can explode, mate. So you get into roles such as like still game, line of duty, but also other roles such as the Carnival Row and uh, White House Farm stuff like what are some great actors, Orlando Orlando Bloom, Stephen Graham, and Mark Addy. But if no mind we'll focus on uh care programs like line of duty and still game, because myself and Scott, massive still game fans just, it's a cult hanging in Scotland, you know what I mean? Grew up watching it and stuff like that. How did how did you go about? We'll come to Lena Duty in a second as well, but, but how did you come about getting to still game? Because you're younger than me, mate, and I remember in primary school watching Two and the Fat and then also still game. To see, see a boy you went to school with end up in still game was bright for me because obviously you're like that. When there's a boy I went to school with, which I need to touch on something as well. It's about a family myth, right? Did you ever watch my sister? <laughs> just say aye because see I Scott Murphy cut it off he mastered on Tinder one point as well so I had to pull him up if he did he didn't he so, so I can tell my boy because she goes on about it I always still give she's that there's that boy with your sister son but, so I just, <laughs> I'd, say, <laughs> I'd, say, I'd, I'd say probably no no okay, fair enough mate fair enough that's good I can tell her no Cheers for that, mate. But like, like we say, he's going back into still game. You just stole his boy's claim your fame, Scott. <laughs> I know. She goes about saying, I see my daughter. How <laughs> about me for the big by the way? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, uh, how, you can't how say did... much. You've got to realise where he is. You can't <laughs> say a lot as well. It's a different life. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Different wife is that, aye? Right. Get on. <laughs> get on. Uh, so how, how did you how did you get to the still game? And what was it like meeting guys like Greg Hempel and Ford Kierling, mate, for the first time? How did that all come about, a whole process? Yeah, so, so basically, the tail end of 2015, I was doing a show at the Citizens Theatre, uh, at, like a musical um, written by Ricky Ross to Deacon Blue. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, Greg Hempel, his wife, uh, she's also an actress in Scot- in Scotland. She, she was in Balamori, played Miss Hooley. Uh, so the Scottish in- theatre industry is quite small and everybody knows everybody's business. And obviously everybody comes and sees all the shows. So they came, her and Greg had saw the show and that's when I first met him very briefly. In the bar after, I was just like, oh, really nice to meet you. And then going, that's fucking big, you know. Uh, <laughs> and then about, went back down to London, and it was like a miserable, rainy, cold night. And I basically, I think I just finished like a 10, 14 hour shift or whatever, something horrible in a restaurant. So, you mm. know, and I get home, it was about one o'clock in the morning, my phone pinged. So I looked up and it's Twitter, and it's Greg Kempel on Twitter. And he's like, we've written this character that we think, me and Ford think would be, you'd be great coming in and, and read. So at first I was like, somebody take, somebody take the piss out of you, me here. That's probably not in it, man. So I take back straight away saying, yeah, I'd love to read it. And then heard fuck all for three months. And then <laughs> kind of forgot, not forgot all about it, like remembered it, but was not trying to like think about it because I was just trying to, try to get other work. Um, and then I was up doing a, sh- I'd just done an advert in Iceland and I came back to Glasgow to do some like short film. And they mm-hmm. were like, oh, we can meet you tonight if you want to meet tonight. So I was like, okay. A taxi up to Greg, uh, Greg's house, and it was a beautiful summer's day, like well, spring day, May or whatever. And the two of them are sitting on the steps outside Greg's house, and both of them are vaping. Like you know, Greg's got a big beard, Ford's wearing a pink shirt. <laughs> totally like, don't don't they look like the people? Like, you know, I don't know what I was expecting. Like I was going to turn up oh, and be yeah. Victor there, and then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, Scotty, how are you doing? Like, come in, come in. <laughs> get into like the living room, and you know, I'm, just, you know, very like feel excited to be there, but also it's like you want to do a good job. You don't know what uh, I did to read, so I was also like a bit un, you know, quietly cautious because you don't know, you don't want to make an ass of yourself, and then uh, like, uh, be confident and be pally. So, quite try to keep quite formal. So they handed me the scenes, explain like a bit about Methadone Mick, um, where the character kind of came from, taken on from Pete the JK. And they were like, yes, yeah, so they were like, we kind of got this kind of voice in our head, this kind of reference point, so do you want to have a read? Mm-hmm. And it was the most bizarre moment because I'm just reading the scenes and then out of nowhere, these two regular guys who are just themselves turn into these like old men that you know oh, so that's... well. Class man, and actually, like that moment, like it was an outer body experience. Uh, I can, like, I, can I imagine, mate? Oh, that's class. You're man. sitting there and you're like, they're doing that in front of me, and I'm <laughs> like, you know, um, uh, and then very quickly, you know, like you've got to get the thing. And actually, when basically in that first bit of the scene, I was like, not laughing, but like going, kind of can't even believe where this is kind of came from. Uh, like, I'm here in this situation. And then, basically, I made one of the jokes in the script, and then I did the laugh. And they were like, ah, stop, 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 what's that laugh? And I was like, I don't know, I was like, so did they obviously, the, the, and they were like, it's fucking brilliant, do that. <laughs> and then that's kind of where the first idea of where, like, Methyl Mix laugh came from, and absolutely, <laughs> being like, I'm, a dick, going, I'm sitting here with Jack and Victor, and kind of like... Uh... So it's, it was, it, you know, it, that's an act that I was talking about. It's like being able to use that energy that you can transform uh, it and becoming something that's, that, that's good. But yeah, that, was, that whole journey, that whole experience was 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 mental. And if I'm, a football analogy, I would say it's like stepping up to play for like the Premier, one of the top teams in the Premiership in Scotland, you know. Um, uh, I was going to say, like, having four messages or... Uh, Greg messaged you like was, was you like one I was getting a message like Stephen Gerrard or something like that, or even Steve Clark or of course you were in there but um, but it must have been like why are you kind of like that nah, can't be a right man do you know what I mean yeah but also from just like uh, it, it, it wasn't even just like their messaging you it's like they're messaging you with the idea that they've got 
you in, they've got you in mind for a, a, a specific role, and that's mm-hmm. like that in itself. I think is quite, you know, you, you obviously I must have made an impact in the show that where they'd seen me, and that you know that's obviously like a really nice thing. Um, mm-hmm. They like, right. but going into that, going into that family, you know, they're all. You know, obviously everybody loves the show, but there was a lot of pressure on the guys because they were just bringing it back after their hiatus. Aye. So there was a nervousness about bringing it back. They'd obviously done the hydro, so there was a lot of you know tension and between like the core cast coming back, and then also I don't know if you ever find that Ross when you've ever joined like a team in this baby being like a guy straight away kind of going like who the fuck do you, think you are coming into like the first team and. Did you ever get that vibe? Uh, no, no, I uh, no me as such, but I've I've seen it. I've seen it in in different environments. That you you get guys who come in, either guys who come in and they're too cocky or whatever, or you get teams or players who they maybe get their back up a wee bit in terms of who the fuck's what, what's he doing, and do you know what I mean in terms of like they're maybe a wee bit nervous about losing a place or I don't know, like. But I I understand what you're saying, aye. Because that's what it was like. It was almost like not necessarily with Gordon Greg because they they wrote it. You know, it was the, the, this is their baby. They were wanting it to be this way, but the kind of regulars, you know, won't name two, won't name names. But basically, there's almost like a bit of like, you know, I'm losing screen time to this wee fucking dick I've never heard of, and you know, like, <laughs> you know, there was a bit of that. And then the first couple of weeks, and then. I suppose it's again how you deal with it. I suppose being in, I, I've been in a football dressing room and been a bit nervous with guys and not felt like I could really be myself. And then that deteriorates your football, you know, just playing like boys club. And then actually, like in that situation, I was like, no, the only way I can show that I'm I'm worthy of, of being here is to actually go on and try and be as good as possible. And actually, like my first day, I knew I was on to a winner because my first day was the letterbox scene with. Ford and Greg, you know, the magic door and everything. <laughs> and Talking door. <laughs> I, so the fact that they were pissing themselves laughing on set when I was doing that, Aye. you know, and trying to make me, put me off and that, that way, that's like, somebody fucking about on set with you is a sign that they like you straight away. Aye, by confidence, mate. Aye, and the fact that they were laughing and, you know, it's probably like one of the best days I've ever had on on, on a on a film set, but four day and all this stupid stuff with his eyes when you're doing tapes and doing all that and all this thing with the eyebrows, like doing Ronald Villiers, <laughs> basically doing Ronald Villiers. <laughs> and that is like my, oh. like he did in the, the last Hydro show. Oh, um, oh you know, that was brilliant. He came on for t- 10 minutes at the start and did Ronald Villiers and like I'd just be sitting in his, I, I absolutely admire for I'd be sitting in his dressing room and we'd be just chatting away and I would just be like, just asking him questions and just try to learn, like, you know, like Ross was saying about like somebody like Mark Kerr, you know, you know he's older than you and he's more experienced than you and although he might, he, he might not be, I wouldn't say that Ford, I would think that Ford's like a hundred times better than me, but he's just got that thing that can make me better. So Mm-hmm. You just pick and ask questions and, and learn from him all the time. That was a kind of thing that was amazing. But Ronald Villiers, watching him do that in the flesh, like this, this, this <laughs> day, is, is, is frighteningly funny. And, uh, you know, I piss my pants every time he does it. It's, it's Do you ever get a pint with folding, folding Greg? Sorry? I mean, you ever get a pint with folding Greg? Oh, loads. Yeah, yeah, loads. Yeah. What do they like? What do they like? Are they, um, are they well, quite mellow? Or are they... Well, I was in, I was in LA... And back in right. 2018, I was there for about a month, and we met met up with them and a friend who I was doing Carnival Row with, and we went for like drinks and dinner and stuff like that. And put it this way, I just saw the two of them sauntering off at like quarter to eight in the morning, and like going to the street to <laughs> go back because they were staying on a boat or something. And it was like you know, so we met at like six in the afternoon. And you know, they 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 like you know they like a they like a drink. Well, Ford doesn't drink anymore, but you know, oh, they're, really? That's they're, they're, they're good crack. You know, um, aye. really like look, but they're they're just family guys. If that makes sense, aye, you get aye. treated more their family, and if you get treated like if you get welcomed in, you know you're kind of it, it, it's a really kind of nice environment. Same kind of question I asked Ross, mate. So that's why you felt as if like you're established, you've kind of made it as such. 
Um, well, no, because my bank balance first uh, after doing something like Still Game was, uh, you know, compl- like the expectation of what everybody thinks it is to the reality of what it actually is. It, it couldn't have been more different. And also Still Game is a BBC Scotland production. So in terms of like paying jobs that you can get as an actor, BBC Scotland is probably like at the bottom. And when you do your right. first job the BBC, it's like you're an apprentice way you know what I mean like it's, an, oh, like, right, okay. it's like on a tier structure right, system yeah. so uh, although you could be in five episodes and then the next season be in four episodes they're only like well this is only like your second season of this so oh, you know the money, right, okay. the money was it was never anything as soon as I finished that I went on the line of duty and then I went on to another job and I was just I had to keep working but to get to a point uh, where I don't think I'll ever be comfortable to be honest I don't think it's that it's that way uh, maybe no, that's no, a good thing I, mate Maybe that's a good thing. I'll keep keep you pushing on then. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've not really. I mean, I've not worked since December two thousand and nineteen, apart from a couple oh, of months, right. just because of the way the pandemic's been and the way that the acting is good. So you've Aye. got to find ways to find ways to survive. And then Aye. I think everybody's got that perception that you know, once you're in something like still game, that's you. But actually, mm-hmm. not. You know, Aye. it's 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 frightening. Uh, last wee bit in the still game left on back, mate. Obviously, I've you play with the Dukes now, but Glasgow Wellington. Do you yeah. ever get wound up? Is them ever kind of wound up the park a bit being left on back? Or you like, fucking shot you, left on back? Uh, or, no, it was like, like the, the game, you know, we played, we came the second friendly where we came back to each. Uh, it was five minutes to go, and you moved me onto the right right side for whatever uh, reason. Uh, I don't know why you did that. But, um, <laughs> totally ineffective on the right wing. Uh, the really much in the middle either. Well, so you know, I thought you were saying me in training again. <laughs> um, and the boy went, the left back went like, oh, yeah, by the way, are you, are you that boy for still game? And then I, in my head, I would like to describe it. Then I did this mad turn of pace and uh, sprinted up the other end. <laughs> But I probably just ended up, you know, running by. He's like, hey, mate, I asked you a question. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, I wouldn't say wound up. I would, you know, you get, you get, you get out in the public and stuff like that. Ah, you, get, that. you get dickheads in every walk of life, really. And I think yeah. there's some people who love, there's people who love to hate still games. So yeah. they say that they, they, they hate it. It's not the same. It's not as good since it came back. Mepto Mick, you know, he's not as good character, but they watch all the episodes and they repeat them and they know everything about yeah. them. Mm-hmm. But th- that completely yeah. weighed by people who absolutely love the show. And of course, if people recognise you and, you know, they're very nice to you, it means that the characters, for somebody to remember your character is... Aye, like a, of course, it mate. It must be like somebody remembering to watch, like a specific game you played. You know, a football match type thing, being able to remember. Because I'll never forget Ross scoring against Beef Juniors in the Scottish Cup. Beef <laughs> 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 Juniors. Was it doing that hole? No, it was up the hole. It was up the hole. It was up the It took it well, to be fair. And I don't get many, so I'm going to go to the museum after. But I, just what you're saying there, you, the, see, uh, there's guys at Park Kid as well that come up. Obviously, we've been to a the the boys, whatever, they, they, they sit there, uh, so it's there's guys there as well. Do you know what I mean? That you go and you see folk looking, and I'm just like, ah, I'm laughing, but he, he loves it. Pretend he doesn't, but he loves it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's good track. It's good track. Uh, I mean, you know, you've got, but you like it because it's also like it's not because you want people to like go, oh, there's that guy for the tell it. It's just like it's nice because people are friendly and nice to you, like. There's like a couple of like the Celtic supporters guys that come up and you know they're like, do you mind if we take a photo and we give you a polo shirt and all that? And it's it, it's kind of like I mean I miss it dearly now because it's the football's been taken away from us, but you feel like it's you're a part of something and it's cool, man. It's it's good and uh, you, feel, you see people smiling and being a bit happy and suppose you feel like that you can make somebody's day, you know. But it's a good it's a good thing, you know. Uh, Scott, that, 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 that must be the, that must be a that must be oh, no. a bit of a difference, though, in terms of see, being an actor or whatever. Like I said, still game is obviously massive and it's massive in Scotland. But see, I obviously have played for teams, but there'll be guys who hate me because I've played for a team or played a certain way against a team. Or, aye, so obviously, saying there, Scott, must be 
Oh, it's different in terms of me. As I say, I, there'll be people who I've played against or people, fans, sorry, who have maybe left their team and they're not happy or whatever, vice versa. But as an actor, surely you're not really getting abuse at all. Do you know what I mean? It must be. When you meet somebody in the public, it's going to be good. Let's be honest. They're going to be a fan well, as such. There's like two things, I suppose. There's, you know, uh, I, the, the very when I first went on to Still Game, the rule was no football, no politics, no religion. That was like a blanket rule because just obviously in, in Scotland can cause, you know, mass controversy. Okay. Um, and, and I think from an early point, I kind of tried to hide it. And then when I played at Celtic Park for the Henrik's Heroes versus Lubos Legends, you know, it was quite hard to hide it anymore because, you know, 67,000 people were there. It was in the paper. Obviously, I just hit the post for 25 yards and I wasn't keeping that quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so, was that a cross? You know, no, it was a shot. It was a shot. <laughs> and it bounced straight in front of people. I mean, it's the best bit of acting I've ever done because when the, when the ball hit the post, it made that noise, you know, that boom. Oh, right, aye. And I knew because it was t- televised, the camera was going to be on me. So in my head, I'm like, ah, yeah. And actually, like, I was just your day. You're like, oh, loud. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. No, I, I was like, it was like I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't mean it. I just was like, ah, the pure joke. Oh, that's pure, you know. Cool, right? and, and there's, there's guys who, there's, there's, there's guys who come up to you and say, I was at a family dinner very, after the first season and, my granddad was not well at the time we were in Bella Vita, I think. My guy comes up to me and you're like, cunt, he's ruined still game. And the, like my whole family there. And my granddad's like, you know, he's got cancer. And he's like, if you want me to go sort him out? And then just on a line of duty, mate. So, same again. Wait, how, how'd that come about, mate? And then obviously working with guys like Martin Comston, mate. Uh, that was just an addition. Just um, That's you know, that I just down in London and uh, had two rounds for that. So went down there, met the director, producer, went, went quite well, and then had to come back in. And you know that was a bit different. That was a bit more tricky because they said I didn't look rough enough because uh, right. I, I had long hair and uh, obviously they shaved my hair off the road. And also yeah. it was like the first major. Part I was doing where I was doing a, a different accent, so that, there was a little bit of pressure there on that. And but it was also a different environment as well because I literally came off still game. Um, I finished on the Saturday and I was in. No, I finished on the Friday and then on this Monday morning I was in line of duty getting. You know, it was that quick a change in the environment from a mm-hmm. comedy where everybody's kind of drinking on set and college. <laughs> And then you go to Belfast and it's really, really serious. You know, that was quick. That was quite a quick change. But guys like, uh, I worked with Andy Newton, uh, who was fantastic. You know, she was, she's been in Westworld, e, 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 ER. Uh, she's in one of the like, Star Wars things. You, you'll know her black women will, you know. So in James Bond, I know. No? Mm, like somebody else. Was she? I don't know who you're talking no, about. Exactly. She said, no bad Mission, Impossible, Mission Impossible 2 with Dougree Scott, I think, is what you think of. Uh, She's the, the jewel thief or something. Um, and that, you know, they, they were great. That was like really taking it up a level, high caliber actors. Um, uh, that was really good. And Martin, Martin was good. Martin was uh, obviously, you know, well, from very similar parts of the world, similar upbringing, similar football teams. Um, except Martin, when he's on set for Line of Duty, he does an English accent all the time. Aye. Uh, and that that was a bit bizarre because obviously I wasn't doing my English accent all the time um, uh-huh. that's just you know obviously preference so I blind in the morning like well, alright Martin how you doing mate and he's like oh, yeah, yeah I'm doing alright like yeah I'm doing fine you know? I'm getting myself a bike and roll you know and you're like okay, okay. How, yeah. how do you find that Scott like having to change your accent like so yeah. obviously like he, he does it and he's, he's always in the character, he's always doing the accent. How do you find it like changing it? Uh, I suppose it's just for me, it's like the memory of the sounds of the words. So I don't know. I'm not, I don't really like to improvise as an actor anyway. Uh, maybe like the odd little moment. But if you just like to try and 
you know, say do that accent and then make a character up. It's quite hard. But when you've got set lines that you're going to say, for me, it's sounds and memories, and then you can right, get it. Done it my head, really. that way. But, you know, the only thing I can improvise in is scouts are, are quite popular. And that's because my mother's a scouser, so it's. Oh, is your mum a or she? I don't know. Yeah. Aye, fair enough, mate. So then, um, back onto yourself, Ross, mate. So, like we say, you're a uh, captain of air and stuff like that. You submit your, you stayed up there. He's, you get promoted. You stayed up again for a year. Is that right? We, uh, aye, so we promoted first season, relegated, promoted, promoted again, again, and then stayed up. Aye, uh, that's right. Aye, what was aye, the promotion parties aye. like? <laughs> aye, good. Well, I can remember they were good. Uh, they. <laughs> Getting big for them. Go away that, no? We the first year we went. In fact, both years actually. First year we went to Ibiza. Um, there was a few years we went to Ibiza. It might, I don't know if there was maybe eight years or nine years or something like that. And then oh, yeah, yeah. that was also when we went through the playoffs. And then the second time, so obviously two years later, we went to we won the league and went to Maga. That was the season we won the league on the last day. We were we were seven uh, ahead with three games to play or something or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but uh, and uh, basically we had to win this game against you know, our Shanks get sent off half an hour in. We could beat uh, one 0 We go to Aloha next week. We could win it pretty much. We could beat two 0 and it's a video. It was playing the rounds again the other day. You've probably seen. I it. I've seen that. I fucking not a fan. It's a fucking left back. It's a fucking left back. And I the rounds Boy, Andy Gagan, who Matt, I'm good mates with, he made the mistake, and it's like <laughs> I seen it. And the reason I seen it is because somebody tagged him in Twitter. <laughs> somebody tagged him, <laughs> on him. he took it well and all that. Um, but I, we obviously went the next, the last game of the season. If Wraith had, we had a better Wraith result pretty much, um, and we ended up winning, and they drew, and the boy had to put you. There's like a split screen there. The boy hits a post in the last minute. Uh, and they would have won the league. Obviously, there was like a helicopter doing, oh, uh, bringing fuck. the trophy down and all that. So it was, it was the fact that we were so, so down and thinking we fucked it here to actually winning it and the surprise of winning it. And then, obviously, you go that night out, mental. The next day, we ended up. It was a PFA awards, um, and Shanks was up for the the player of the year. So it was only maybe me and. Me and one or two others that were going to support Shanks because we would have had to play the playoffs like on the Tuesday. So basically, didn't want to be there. We're going to support Shanks. Turns into we win the league. We get two tables at the PFAs. Everybody turns up steaming. <laughs> Shanks is up on the stage. Get, he won the play. Yeah, he's up on the stage. And it's like when he lost his voice, and obviously the whole fucking Aye. place is just laughing at him. Not because <laughs> Peter Martin's taking it, it's just that he's lost his voice. He's um, fucked that up. That was brilliant. And then Aye. we went to Maga, we went to Maga Luth on the, I think it was a Wednesday or something like that, um, so uh, it was carnage, but no, it was some brilliant Aye. times, you know what I mean? I, I think a, a lot of people said before, when I was growing, like, obviously coming through as well as a player, like, you will you need to cherish these moments in terms of winning the league and all that, so, Aye. Obviously, for me, I've won Aye. promotion and won a league as well. Do you know what I mean? Did you uh, lift the trophy? Lifted the trophy. I, me, and the, the chairman. The chairman Aye. had been there for don't know how many years, and his dad was the chairman before him. And basically, Aye. I think it was the first time in say twenty five years. I want to say that he had won the league or twenty years. Say so. Probably me and the chairman lifted the trophy. I. Probably me. Scott, do you say you need? It was kind of bittersweet because I. I'd get injured uh, earlier in that season and I kind of missed the end of it. Um, so, obviously, it was uh, brilliant to win the league and all that, but uh, I just kind of, I wasn't playing, so it just wasn't really the same. But no, it was it was brilliant as well. Uh, so, uh, you, touched, you touched on it a wee bit ago, mate. You played some charity games and stuff like that. What kind of players have you played against in big names and stuff like that? Have you got a favourite kind of charity game you've played in? Yeah, um, so I'm actually the ambassador for Airdrie Football Club. Uh, Ross, All right. Nice link I was going to mention earlier on. Um, so they started kind of they do like a charity match every. Well, we didn't do the one this year, but they've done one over the last two years. Um, and the first year that was uh, the Graham Soonis, uh, Ali McCoy, Neil Lennon, Owen Coyle, uh, those type of boys. Um, and Soonis played, no? No, Soonis was the manager. Uh, I, which was just, yeah, you know. Quite glad because I wouldn't have wanted to be in a 50 50 with Graham. <laughs> yeah, I've seen you tackle Scott. You'd have been all right. 
No, but I don't know why being the 50 it's 50 a bastard, all right? needed to be the guy who injured an old man. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, and then, you know, done a few others. Um, it, you know, you know what it's, I just like any opportunity to go and play football, really. Uh, uh, how many fans are there that went to Park Kid? How many fans are there? Every single seat was filled. It was the, uh, the guy who runs the foundation said that it was the only, it's the biggest att- modern day attendance in any football match uh, in Scotland. 60,000 then or something like that? I think it was like 65,000 or something like that because there was no segregation and, you know, there was no cut-offs or whatever. And oh, I, what was that on? I came on, it was the day after we won the Invincible Treble. All right. Uh, and I came on in the 67th minute when they were singing In the Heat of Lisbon. And it was, you know, bonkers. I can't really remember. I cannot... My dad's pal's videos, oh. when I came on, he did, like, fat, you know, player cam for his big lens so he was sitting in the party. Oh. And, I mean, some terrible stuff. I, I, I oh, put Momo Silla in his arse. I nearly get booked. I ran the ball out of the touchline. <laughs> tried to take, take somebody on. Uh, try to tackle Scott Brown, get pushed off the ball. Uh, and then... <laughs> Obviously, I had my 25... Oh, I tried to do a log pass to uh, Henrik Larson. He just went, you go got it. Larson? So... Fuck me, man. I Aye, me. so, I mean, that's... And then, obviously, hitting the post uh, for my wonderful shot. Um, you know, <laughs> Rod is laughing because I'm sure I show people once we, if I've had a few drinks before going... <laughs> it's like the only... I don't do that with anything else. Anything to do is that with... Is that a video that going about? I've got it in my forehead. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> Obviously I believe I've it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Tommy Johnson, if memory serves in 2001, scored the title winning goal against St. Mirren. Brad back checks both ways to see where the support is. He picks out Chris Collins. Wise move. Three inside the area. Decent ball. Oh, orthodox from the goalkeeper. Holds to the post and Patsy will tear. Very nearly the uh, first goal of the second half for Henry Larson's team. So, also, I played a Kilmarnock charity game uh, for Kilmarnock, a, char- a cancer charity in Kilmarnock at Hurl for Juniors. Uh, I'd done it off the ball in the Bobby moment and then I went down to do it and they were getting beat, hammered, the team I played for and I scored a worldy free kick as well and there's a video of that. <laughs> no. Fuck it. Is it just you who's seen these videos? Or, or? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's the one. To be fair, to be fair, I'll send it in the. I'll send it in the the Celtic the the, the post. It's Parkhead. I'll send it in after this, and you can put it as a promo. Right. For the, there we go. Ah, there you go. That's you. a promo. There. As a promo for the the, the podcast. <laughs> so going forward, Scott, mate, have you any, have you any, anything you want to achieve? Is there, what, is it, what is your plan going forward? Now? Obviously, COVID stuff is pulling you back, but, but what is your kind of ambition now, mate? Um, so I was meant to play, I was meant to play Hamlet in the summer, uh, which is obviously a, a Shakespeare play, which is something I've wanted to do my, my, my whole, you know, adult life, was from when I was a teenager. Um, but the things I've not done, I've not, uh, I've not done a big play in London yet on the West End. That's something that I really like. Uh, that'd be class, mate. Uh, and then also, I'd really like to kind of make one of the step ups and maybe try and be the lead in a series, not just be the whipper mm-hmm. boy. Um, <laughs> you know, that'd be quite nice. But you know, it's uh, small steps. I mean, uh, a good bit of pedigree, now, mate. Anyway, you've got a good bit of pedigree, anyway. Uh, yeah. Listen, you see, you see if the career stayed the same and how it's been, and I, I kind of consistently did this level for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years, I'd be very, I'd be very, very happy. My missus might not be, she's expecting it. To, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? see till forever, mate. Uh, aye, it's okay. <laughs> hey, excuse me, I do not live it. I'm on the other side of the road to see till. <laughs> the divide, the Glasgow Road divide. <laughs> I think it's called West Central Paisley. Oh, hey, don't speak Ella like Gala, how about anyway? Don't speak <laughs> like Ella. <laughs> right, boys, thanks for hey, having Scott, me. Scott, mate. Cheers, Scott. Mate. Your day, mate. Hey, go, mate. Aye, no worries. Speak to you later. Cheers, Scott, mate. Do you touch you, mate. Cheers, Cheers mate. Hey, Ross, mate. Back to yourself, mate. Um, where were we? So, I so how did how did that play out for the time you've won the league? You're basically 
who who left Earth first? Did Ian McCall leave? He left Earth for party, didn't he? When Hulk, aye, he, aye. When Archie Ball got the sack for party, he took over, didn't he? Was that right? No, it was yeah. uh, Gary Caldwell took over. Oh, um, fuck, did, mate. Oh, yes, and then yeah. Gary Caldwell obviously got the sack and Ian McCall went in there. But I think it was, we'd won, so we'd won that league. We'd won the league one, stayed in the championship. We actually were pretty good in the championship. We were kind of yeah. first and second most of the season. Ross yeah. County won the league. We finished fourth, I think, uh, in the playoffs in the first season back in. And then yeah. the following season, which would be right, I think that's when McCall left. Uh, I think that's right. Um, so yeah. that'd be my fifth season at Air. And obviously that was, he left and say, I don't know, maybe the September or October. Um, and obviously asked me to sign in the in the in the kind of Christmas period or whatever after it. Uh, obviously in a pre-contract, my contract was up in the summer and he'd asked me to sign. Um oh, and we kind of agreed a deal, whatever. Obviously, that was there was a few kind of unhappy people at air or whatever, but the manager at air was totally fine with me. He was it was Mark Kerr obviously took the man to the job. Aye. Um he was. He's uh, a player, oh, he understood, mate. Oh, he was brilliant. So he, uh, he, he couldn't have been better. I basically said to him, like, the guy, uh, McCall, had, had basically said to me about what he signed and whatever. And I said to, to Kerzo, listen, he's interested. And Kerzo was like, listen, I knew, I knew there would be something, I knew there would be interest there. And, uh, and then obviously I said to Kerzo as well when, when obviously the, the offer was in and I was going to accept it. And Kerzo was like, he was saying, no, oh, you've got to look after yourself, you've got to. You've got to go and kind of try and achieve as as much as you can as well. So he was mm-hmm. totally understanding, which was brilliant because there was totally a lot right. of there was a lot of folk. There wasn't many folk that knew at the time until after it came out. But see, when it came out that I'd signed, there was a lot of folk here who weren't they maybe happy. Do you know what I mean? No folk within here in terms of the dressing room and all that. Like all the players are understanding and stuff, but there was a few right. fans who weren't happy. Some some funny tweets I got and stuff like that. But, <laughs> Uh, but I think most most folk understand that you you kind of uh, you want to go and try and achieve as much as you can. Do you know what I mean? And of course, in a relatively mate. short career. Uh, of course, mate. And obviously that Part was it as well, mate. I it's, it's a, they're, a, they're a huge club. I love my time here, mm-hmm. um, but mm-hmm. I, I just looked at Thistle and and looked at maybe the resources that they could have. Obviously, it's not gonna work out that way for whatever reason, but. It, the resources that they could have it they had when I was signing they basically were saying well we want to go and win the championship next year um mm-hmm. and obviously since then uh COVID, uh, COVID uh, the year. <laughs> it's been been a bit of a disaster but uh, uh, but it's I, like I'm I'm still glad I've done it. Do you know what I mean there's no course, I've no got any regrets at all. So no it, it's been good. Just back on McCall mate, I take it you you must go with him Mel he must like he's a player he's taking you for the air, man. Is he, he, I, clo- I, he, clo- he close to him? I wouldn't say close. Like, how close can you be with, with your manager? Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, mm-hmm. In terms of the other boys, maybe a wee bit, but it's no... Mm-hmm. He, uh, he's a he's a character. Uh, anybody who meets him will, will say the same, but uh, he obviously respects me and, and likes me as a player and, and uh, maybe as a person as well. Obviously, I've been, I've been captain and I'm captain again under him, so it's... it's mm-hmm. It's good you've got that relationship with somebody. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. some boys kind of try and take the piss a wee bit, say your gaffer's boy, whatever. But it's it's good that you've got that relationship with somebody, and you can you can trust them, and they can trust you as well. I think it's probably the best things I've played, mate. To be honest with you, man, because I, I don't know about yourself, but see, I was playing for a gaffer. Do you have nobody? You see, I, 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 obviously, you'll try your best for yourself, man. But I think it does kind of play in your mind a wee bit because if. Why are we hanging mm-hmm. out? You? It kind of puts you. Out. I don't know about yourself, but for me anyway. But I was just kind of thinking like that. No, I hundred I I agree with you there because I've been most managers I've got on with or whatever, and like I'd say maybe the only one would be John McGlynn. And at the time, it was mm-hmm. more. It wasn't that I didn't like him or respect him, like hundred like loads of respect for him, but it was more probably me in terms of at the time I was touched on. I was injured on and off, so I was frustrated at that point. I wasn't maybe playing as much because of that. And then mm-hmm. there'd be times where he'd maybe say something in, in training and I'd have a wee bite back, which, I'll ah, see, looking yes. back, I'm, I shake my head at myself and I'm a wee bit embarrassed because I'm like, why the fuck? It, wasn't, it never came to any badness, but it was just like, what, mm-hmm. you know, I was a wee dick, you know what I mean? <laughs> Whereas, 
like as you say, you, if it, if that had been somebody that that you got on with, or whatever, then mm. you take it on board, wouldn't you? You take it ah, on board. You, ah, you, and as I say, it wasn't that I didn't go on with him, but it was it was more just a, a frustration at myself rather than anything else. Of course, mate. Of course. So, like you say, party you better lucky. Like, well, men are lucky with the whole COVID stuff and whatever. And like you say, they have the ambitions to to try and push back up the league. So, how do you think? How do you see things now going forward? The club, obviously, it's a bit kind of stop start season for yourselves. You've got fall cut as well. It's a strong league, mate. Do you know what I mean? So, how do you see things going forward for the club? I, I, I'm positive because I think looking at the league table, people maybe shake their head at that. But I, I think if you looked at our team, you you maybe know know the details. But we've had the, a ridiculous amount of injuries this year. Aye. It's been it's been mm. mental. Uh, I don't think we've had a full squad to pick for you at all really this season. So mm. we've got boys starting to come back uh, now, um, and the fact that we're kind of still in touch. I'm hopeful. Or, uh, obviously, you're hopeful that we can we can actually get back and play. Do you know what I mean? Right with the COVID. Um, but Aye. once we do get back, if we do get back, then I'm I'm kind of confident that we'll start to kind of pick up and and go and make a challenge to go and win the league. Um, obviously, as you touched on, like and as I said before, I, I came or I signed. We have you to try and go and win the championship. So. Now that you're in League One, you just got to go on with it. Do you know what I mean? That's that's just the bottom line. Teams are going to, you see it when teams play against you. You're a bit because of the size of the club and all that. You're a bit of a scalp when when teams Aye. get a result, whatever. So I think for for me, I'm confident now that we get boys back if we can get them back. That we're going we're going to kick on at the next at the season. So who who's the players and the characters in that team? In that who's who's the loud ones? Who's the quiet ones? Who's who's who's, good, who's hey. best in training as well? Don't see yourself. No, the, the Blitz Spittle. Blitz Spittle's <laughs> well, come back alive. more. And I think he's been, he was quiet at first, but he's kind of come out of shell a wee bit again. Uh, you get Tom mm-hmm. aware. Big Brian Graham is certainly a character. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he's one of them, he wears his heart in his sleeve, but it's mm-hmm. kind of, he's so up there, like in terms of Aye. aggression, he just wants to win. He's a winner and all that. Um, but he's a big guy, funny big guy. Uh, and obviously, you've got Fozzie, Richard Foster. Somebody to ask you about Richard Foster. You used to make a deal in the haircuts or something like that. <laughs> What's all about? Pleaching the hair at the same be, time. Uh, <laughs> I will. He, like, I was, because I signed obviously with this all last year and in the, in the summer, mm-hmm. I thought I was bored. Everybody was bored in lockdown. And I'm like, <laughs> you know what, I'm going to try something. And I signed. But at uh, the point, my hair was like, Walk down haircut. I so, but then obviously they chose me because of what happened. All the other boys were furloughed, right? So because I just signed, I couldn't get furloughed. So see, then the the then when the new strip was coming out, they launched that. So they, they were basically like, "You're hit for everything because you're the only player Aye. that's no furloughed. <laughs> that none of them are legally allowed to do it." So I'm doing Aye. it with the. The, the, the pure blonde hair, right? I'm thinking, Bright sunny day, man, What about this fucking fanny with his blonde hair? <laughs> um, and then obviously, Fozzie turns up and he's got the same, and I'm like, ah, I don't feel as bad there, I don't feel as happy. Um, but I, no. What's Fozzie like? He's, he's, like, he's probably played at the highest level and it's in that squad, and what's, what's he like? Uh, ah, he's, good. he's good. Uh, he's good. Is, yeah, but, he's good. Uh, he's good. Obviously, you can tell that he's played, he's. he's he demands standards, which I like about aye, him. Uh, obviously, he, at times you're like, fucking hell, Fuzzy, come down. He'll just lay the boss away or whatever, but it's more. Oh, really? In, right? frust- in frustration, no, lay the boss away is in big time. More in frustration in terms of get the standard up, or if it's aye. his bad standard or whatever, do you know what I mean? That, that he'll do it. Uh, but he's good. You need folk like that uh, to have, and he'll have a wee five minute rant. He's funny. He has a wee <laughs> five minute rant. And it's, it's him. He, He's like that because he, he always uh, jokes. Him and Big Brian, Big Brian's similar. They'll uh, have a rant and they'll get it out. But they're like to me, they're like, you're the one you've got to watch because you'll just go and huff somebody. Rather than <laughs> get it out, you'll just keep quiet and go and huff somebody. And I'm just like, well, aye. Like, aye. So once, you see the way you like, started like that. Aye. So, aye. no, but they're aye. good good guys. Um, you've got good good players in the team. Obviously, like aye. Stuart Bagan as well, who's played aye. Aye. so for how many years? Do you know what I mean? Aye. Been a bit late. So going forward, mate, again, obviously you're officially now and committed to that job. Is that 
going forward he's still like to achieve maybe get the SPL one day or something I'd like to challenge myself on playing the Premier League I, I, I obviously that as I, as I said before I, I said that a couple of times that was kind of the goal in terms of mm-hmm. the, one of the reasons that I'd, I'd sign with this so obviously it's not going to work out that way as, as such the now hopefully it does in the future um, but I'd like to go and challenge myself playing the Premier League see how you cope against your I don't know your Glenn Kamaris your Scott Brown's Callum uh, McGregor's yeah. folk like that who are clearly the best mm-hmm. players in the country um, Have you so played how, the Park Egypt? I've not played I've not played uh, I played there in a youth it was a youth uh, cup semi-final with Livingston uh, I played there uh, funny my cousin my cousin who's a big uh, big Celtic fan he and all my all my family are Celtic fans to be fair but uh, he is you're a Rangers fan too <laughs> it's my, <laughs> it's, my uh, it's my cousin's like uh, boyfriend or husband now sorry so back at the time obviously all my family come to the game it's a big big game for me at the time semi-final mm-hmm. and they all go to the game get tickets and they go up the game Sean goes up to the game with them and Sean's like alright we'll see his season 90 minutes whatever and they're like the fuck are you talking about so I, I'm I'm going to sit. I'm going to sit over there. Where they, like there's a green brigade because we've got a semi final. Like, <laughs> like, 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 I'm going to sit there. Like, I'm not fucking Jim. I'm going to sit there. Like, man. <laughs> so no, but I'd like. I'd, I'd obviously love to go and challenge myself and and, and kind of play at the at the at the highest level in Scottish football. Do you know what I mean? That's it, mate. That's us, Ross, mate. That's brilliant, mate. Fizz. Hope you enjoyed it yourself, mm-hmm. mate. No, no, I loved it. I was good. Aye. Good having Scott on um, as well. Good stories, man. Aye. Aye, it was class, man. Sorry about the technical hitches. Don't know what's happened there because that's not generally <laughs> no, what happened. Don't last worry, couple of nights, mate. But don't aye, worry about it. Thanks again, mate, for doing that with me. Thanks for your time, and, um, man. Nah, no worries, try, no worries. But we'll try and again soon, man. Aye, hopefully, hopefully he's got, aye, your, he's got Fitbit back up and running as well for you. Hopefully, you know I mean? mate. Uh, 